So you clicked on this random video in desperate need of some highly dangerous and cringy setups? Well guys, I got you covered. Let's dive into today's episode of How to Hack It Together. In this episode we're gonna talk about why shrinking your end mills and other tools is awesome and how you can hack together your own tool shrinking station. There are three main components to this contraption. At first you need a power supply. This happens to be a Siemens 48 volts 20 amps unit, but any will do. Secondly, you need some kind of a switching device to turn the power on or off. In this case, I used a breaker. Last but not least, there is the induction circuit board and coil you can buy as a completely soldered unit for ranging tasks. Mine is made by that company, I have no affiliation with them, but I will leave a link somewhere in the description. There is nothing else to it for now. Even the expensive off-the-shelf solutions are strictly just these three basic components. The rest is added to make it more convenient and safe to use. For shrinking a tool into its holder, you need to make sure everything is as clean as possible. Also make sure to buy tools that are illegal for a shrink fit. They should not fit at all at room temperature and be ground to nominal diameter H9 tolerance according to Dean ISO. After flipping the switch it takes around 40 seconds to fully heat up. But it isn't about speed, take your time and make sure not to overheat the holder. You're shooting for a brown to purple color, which corresponds to around 250 to 300 degrees C. This enlarges the bore just enough to accept the tool. Make sure to seat it properly, since you only got seconds before the end mill expands as well and makes a tight connection. This is another tool, 12 mil in diameter. You can see that this process isn't really for folks that need to shrink tools on a daily basis, especially considering workflow and safety. But I do prototyping. The tools I set up tend to break rather than wearing out. So if you just want to take a peek into the shrinking world or don't mind not having a full-blown station which collects dust 364 days a year, Maybe this and some automation might be an interesting start. Also, since you guys love the tools changer so much, I put in some shots from the inside of the machine. De-shrinking your tools after usage is also really easy. You can see the tool is cold to the touch and it takes under a minute to heat it up again. So there we are. We talked about how to build an inexpensive shrinking station. Now we need to talk about why you need one. Well, it's rather easy. The shrink fit is one of the most sublime connections you can pick for a tool. The tool you get is really well balanced and can withstand heavy loads of torque. Also, they tend to become really skinny without losing rigidity. That makes them perfect for working in deep cavities and reaching into tight spaces. But the most important part is the runout. Check this out. This is a micron resolution.
Next step will be to get the tool changer fully loaded and get cooking. I got some really interesting projects lined up. If you got any questions or just want to leave a comment, I'm really interested in your feedback and I do read all of them. That's all for today, see you next time.